and the esoteric title Nets Wimana, a yeah. framework <laughs> for chemical reaction modeling, and it's a joint work uh, with yeah. uh, our colleagues, and I get the names now. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, it's a um, joint work with Fosco Reggian and uh, Daniele Palombi. Uh, by the way, the okay. slides were made by Daniele, so the credits for the slides go to him. Okay, and uh, your affiliation is with... Uh, yeah, I'm affiliated with University of Pisa and uh, Statebox, that is a company. Uh, Fosco is uh, affiliated with University of Tallinn, uh, Taltech, and Daniele is a student at the University of Sap Sapienza. Uh, at the University of Rome. Okay, thank you very much. You can start. Okay, cool. So, um, yeah, Nets with Mana. Uh, what is Nets with Mana? Well, uh, let's start with something that I guess many people here know that are Petronets, very famous model of computation, uh, that were originally invented to model chemical reaction, even if they became very, very uh, important also in computer science um, afterwards. So the idea is that in, if you think about um, nets, uh, petri nets as chemical reactions, uh, you may be missing something. And that is that especially in like biochemical um, uh, contexts, your actual structure that makes the reaction possible uh, can break down over time. Um, so yeah, basically in a real uh, context, sometimes processes deteriorate and do not run forever. And so our idea was basically uh, factoring this in, uh, in our model. Or now I don't think it's super important to understand uh, what mananets are, even if I go through it. I think that the important thing here is really the, the concept that we stumbled upon, that is this concept of non-local semantics for a pattern, which I will present very shortly. So uh, basically, one obvious way to, uh, you know, uh, define pattern where transitions can stop working at some point is by just adding some places. So we add these new places in uh, pale green that we call mana, and these somehow represent the life points that every transition can spend. You know, so every time a transition fires, one life point is decreased. And at some point with trans the transition like zero mana, it cannot fire anymore. So even if transition is there, it's like the, the chemical reaction is inactivated, basically. Okay, so this is the naive way to do it. But the other way is uh, the external way in which we basically endow tokens with properties. So each token now has a piece of local information. So this token here uh, in the top left, for instance, is saying, oh, I know that U has three life points remaining, three mana remaining, and V has one mana remaining. This other token down here is another view of the world. And you can uh, basically, uh, merge this information into a global information. The reason why I call these uh, non-local semantics is because the tokens are locally holding non-local information about the network. And you can join these into uh, basically a kind of global information. And we will prove, uh, we proved in the paper at least, that uh, basically these two points of view are equivalent. So you can seamlessly switch from this internal way to this external way and vice versa. The kind of tools we will use to uh, talk about this word is uh, category theory. We will in particular, in particular rely uh, on the work, uh, you know, about uh, rating category theory and monoidal categories with patronets. And so the external way will basically be a categorical semantics in terms of functors, while the internal way will turn out to be a commonadic procedure. So, okay, let's dive in. So a patronet formally is just made of a set of places, a set of transitions, and two functions that specify the inputs and the outputs of each transition. 
P to the N is the free commutative monoid on P uh, that is also called the set of finite multisets on P, if you prefer. Okay, other very common terms that we all know, uh, a marking is a distribution of tokens for the network. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry? Uh, a transition is enabled if a marking, uh, in a marking if the market has enough tokens in each one of its inputs. And enable transitions can fire, and when transition fires, basically um, the marking gets changed and gets updated according to this. Okay, this is standard Petronet theory. Uh, there is a notion of morphism of Petronets uh, that allows us to pack Petronets into a category. So we have a category where the objects are nets and the morphisms are pairs that make uh, these square commutes. Okay, so uh, now categories of executions. So if uh, you give me a Petronet, uh, I can generate a free commutative strict monoidal category of executions. So what is this? It's a category that is monoidal. So moreover, it has a notion of not only composing morphisms sequentially, but also in parallel. It's strict, that means that these parallel operation is really well behaved and it's commutative, meaning that literally the monoidal product of two objects is commutative. So A tensor B equals B tensor A. Uh, so how do we build this thing? Well, we use P to the N as uh, the objects of our uh, commutative monoidal category. So the objects of our category are just markings of the net. Every possible marking is an object of the category. And morphisms, they are freely generated, meaning that for each transition that goes from some input to some output, we have a corresponding generator in the category, in the free category that we are building. Uh, and, you know, we formally consider all the possible parallel and sequential compositions of these generators. We have identities and we quotient out by a boatload of equations to make sure that what we get is a category. Okay, so uh, the idea is very simple. The objects in this category represents the marking of the net and morphisms represent execution. So you can see here that I have a Petronet and the marking of the Petronet corresponds to this object down here that is denoted as a string diagram. And as the transition fires, uh, so for instance, I'm firing T here, I'm basically composing uh, these string diagrams. So an entire string diagram from P1, P2, P3, uh, P3 to P3, P4, P2, P3, P3, in this case represents just a possible sequence, sequence of transitions that have fired. Okay, with this thing, we have a functor from Petri to the category of commutative uh, strict monoidal category that has a right a joint. Uh, these will be, it's not like super important, but if you know category theory, this means that this is a nice result. Okay, so how do we do this mana thing? How do we add mana to Petronets? Okay, you give me a Petronet and I generate a uh, basically um, its category of execution. So this thing here, and now I take this C of M and I generate a C mana of M uh, given by the following. The generating objects are uh, the places of the net uh, co-product with the transitions. And for each generating morphism in CM, I have, I introduce a morphism generator in C mana N that has exactly the same shape, but since now transitions are also objects, I add an object here. So I'm basically taking this U and I'm adding itself to the domain. And the result is exactly that for each transition, I'm adding a new place that represents the mana that the transitions has to consume to work. And we proved that this assignment is a co-monad, so it has some nice co-algebraic properties. And the adjunction I mentioned before between Petri and commutative strict monadal categories means that every free commutative strict monadal category is presented by a net. So this category that I create here is exactly presented by 
the net obtained by adding mana to the transitions. Okay, now the interesting part, the non-local semantics. So what is the idea? The idea is that if you give me a monoidal category M, any monoidal category, I say that a net with a non-local commutative M semantics is a pair N and sharp, where N is the pattern net and M sharp is a lax monoidal functor that goes from uh, the category generated by the net, this one, to um, M, our semantics. And how are morphisms made? Well, morphisms are just strict monoidal functors that make uh, the obvious triangle commute. So in particular, I will have commutative of M, N sharp, this is my M. I will have commutative of M with M sharp. And, you know, everything we require, a morphism is just a functor here, so that this square, this triangle commute. Okay. Uh, with this, we can generate a category that we call Petri M, so Petri with an M semantics. And now we can uh, say what the external mana construction is. So the idea is I can define a functor from, for each patternet N, I can define a functor from its category of executions to span. Uh, span is a category where objects are sets and morphisms are a couple of functions of this shape. So this is a span basically. Uh, and this category is very well behaved. You can compose it uh, via pullbacks. You, you have a lot of nice properties. And it's also monoidal. So um, we define a functor to span. Uh, how we define it? Each object of CN is mapped to T to the N, so to the set of multisets over T. What it means is that each object is mapped to the set of all possible distributions of mana for our net. Because a multiset on the transitions of the net is nothing more than that. It's a number for each um, transition. So a mana level for each transition. And a morphism is sent to a span of this shape. That is basically saying that uh, you can think about a span literally as a witness sensitive relation between sets. So this is saying that each element in T gets sent to uh, another, basically each multiset on T is sent to a new multiset by subtracting the mana cost of uh, the morphism, wherever this operation is defined. Um, and this defines the lax monoidal functor, and the interpretation, which it's what really matters, in my opinion, is that in this case, what we have is that a marking of N is a pair, where X is uh, an object of CN, so a distribution of tokens, and U is a distribution of mana. Uh, and for a transition to be enabled, U minus the cost, the mana cost of the transition has to be defined. Uh, so, for instance, um, I mean, you can see what this f of n is here. is basically a multiset that counts how many times each generating morphism is used. So, in this case, this means that, for instance, if you want to fire two transitions, you have to be sure that you have a, at least one of mana for each of the transitions you want to fire. And fire firing produces a marking in which f has uh, one less mana. So if I fire f, for instance, in this situation, this is what I get in return. You see, uh, now I have uh, two tokens because that's what f does. But the global information is updated. F has spent its own mana. And we have a procedure called uh, internalization where we can actually relate these internal and external semantics. So how does it work? Uh, this is also known as written deconstruction in category theory. And the idea is that if you give me, the idea is that the category that we defined in the beginning, the mana category that is defined here is isomorphic 
uh, to the category obtained as follows. Objects are couples where X is an object of CN and small x is uh, an element of the set we map X to. Remember that N sharp is our functor to span. And morphisms are dealt accordingly. And when you actually do the calculations, it turns out that you are taking an external mana construction on the left and you are exactly mapping it to a category that is equivalent. So basically the same from a categorical point of view to the one on the right. Um, okay, and with this idea now we can generalize things. We can give a more general mana construction I won't go into detail in definition because the picture is uh, telling enough. You know, we may be adding mana places for each transitions, but now have, you know, non-trivial dependencies between mana. So in this case, for instance, this thing here could be seen as a catalyst. Uh, this transition here, this chemical reaction, when it fires, is actually producing nutrients or stuff for this other chemical reaction to happen and vice versa uh, and stuff like that, you know. So we can define this procedure. It's more general. The only thing that we lose is the commonadicity, but, you know, there's a way to basically start with a category and get this new category here. And now the idea is that basically there is a very high level categorical result that says that this width category on the left, which is the category where this construction belongs, is equivalent to the category of the right, that is the category of lax functors to span. So what this means really is that there is a way to externalize this net. With a net like this, with a construction like this, we can play the same game we played here in a way so that internalization still works. So it really means that these internal and external constructions are always dual. Um, and yeah, basically there are two functors to go from here to here and vice versa. Uh, and as before, it turns out that, you know, if you go here and you go back, then you get something that is isomorphic as a category from to the thing you started with. Um, so, yeah, this is basically um, the main idea, and with this idea in mind, we can generalize things. And by the way, I think that's where, uh, you know, category theory becomes really useful, because in this case here, we had, you know, a pretty simple mana construction, and we were able to define this functorial semantics explicitly by just drawing the span. Basically, in this case, where your mana construction can be way more complicated, in principle, you wouldn't be sure that you could play the same game. But luckily, you know, these very high level categorical results basically guarantee for you that there is a non-local semantics that represents these generalized mana nets. Um, yeah, so that's basically it. And I think that the real important take home message here is that these functors from three categories to uh, spam or to other categories are really, really interesting and say a lot of interesting things when you think about extensions of patronets. So with very similar techniques, for instance, we were able to model colored nets or garden nets, depending which term you prefer the most. We were able to represent the bounded nets that uh, I will present at applied category theory this year. Uh, we were able to model a hierarchical nets, so nets with a given level of hierarchy uh, that I presented at a um, um, workshop uh, just, you know, part of uh, stuff uh, a couple of days ago. And there's many more stuff that we can do. So what is that you have to expect from the future? Well, we are definitely investigating uh, time nets and nets with inhibitor arcs. Um, then we have a notion of history-dependent nets or graphs where basically you have automaton that 
process tokens differently depending on how they were processed by you know previous nodes in the automaton basically uh yeah as they say we want to extend some of these results to graph as well and in general we want to keep studying the non-local semantics especially on the category spam because there's still a lot that we feel we can take out and yeah that's it thank you very much for your time